Okay, welcome to another episode of LA Fish Guys. We are going to be setting up about a 270 gallon tank with a black uh, gloss laminate stand and canopy, uh, a uniquely shaped uh, rectangular tank with a very large radius round front corners on it. And we've got uh, a new few members of the crew here today, but here we are in this brand new home. Uh, here is the tank, 72 inches long, 36 tall, 24 wide, large radius corners, um, a laminate stand, which for some odd reason looks to be matte finish, and I thought it was supposed to be a gloss finish, but maybe matte was what they show, so I'll have to look at the paperwork. Uh, meet Eric Banks, newest member of the crew, and this is the spot we're going to put it in, and our faithful buddy Condi is out here going to be doing the rock work. He is getting prepared with his nephew Daniel there. Uh, so they're going to start uh, sorting out the live rock, which is a combination of live rock as well as real reef rock, creating the uh, structure inside of it. This will be a fish only system uh, as opposed to a coral reef system. Uh, so, with that in mind, let's get to work. Before we place the tank on its stand or slide the stand into its position, we need to place the wet dry trickle filter as well as the auto top off reservoir inside the stand. As once it's in position, it'll become quite awkward to get it inside the stand at a later time. So the filter is sitting inside the stand. Uh, it's an extra long version of a wet dry trickle filter. Um, there is the uh, 10 gallon ATO container. Um, that will take care of uh, replenishing uh, evaporated water. Um, this will have a um, submersible uh, DC pump driving the system. And other than Apex, um, and some controllers for the Tunzies, which we'll have to figure out where we're going to mount those, and that may end up being mounted on the end inside the cabinet, or possibly that end. So uh, a couple of steps uh, proceeded forward there. Uh, the tank, as I mentioned, has these big radius corners on there, what I refer to as coffee cup diameter radius corners and of course the stand does as well so that's all matching um, it's a 36 inch tall 72 inch long uh, 24 inch wide acrylic tank with an overflow in the corner here a filter system and the ato reservoir now in place it's time to get the tank lifted up on top of the stand but that requires the stand to be positioned properly so that four men can walk around it and lift that tank up on top of the stand. Okay, so Condi and Daniel are now beginning to build the structure. Um, one tiny little snafu. We were supposed to end up with uh, two boxes of branching rock and one box of boulder rock, but Somehow, it appears as though the boxes were marked wrong. Um, this says BR, 
on the side of the box. This says BL on the side of the box. And this one looks like it says BL for Boulder. So um, one or two of the boxes was supposed to be Boulder and one of them or two of them was supposed to be branching but we ended up with three boxes of branching rock so that's a uh, faux pas on real reef uh, labeling program there uh, we do have live rock uh, which is what we are using to um, mix or blend uh, the two different styles of rock together and Condi's uh, style is one where we drill and pin so he has an idea as to um, the dimensions of the tank and he has an idea as to what I'm looking for as far as a structure and so with that in mind I kind of give him free reign to uh, artistically create uh, a sculpture um, using the two different kinds of rock and we're also going to end up uh, having decorative uh, dead decorative corals in here that would be rotated out on a regular basis as well. So with that being the case, I think we've got um, a plan and uh, we've got uh, a direction. Yeah, so we're going to end up walking out, out this way and then coming back in. The person at that corner is going to get off, so that this corner slides on. Okay. It's a fairly heavy tank and a plan or an understanding as to how and who and where everyone is supposed to do or what they're supposed to do is important for safety reasons as well as everyone knowing where they're going to be standing or where they're going to be moving into or who they're moving on to. I intentionally had the upper lip of the stand made taller so this requires the tank to be lifted and placed onto the stand from the back side, of which in turn it's pushed forward onto the stand from the rear. You want to stop there? Um, we still have to put the bulkheads in. Okay. okay. So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great, but you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the Hawk and the Surf, all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae, algae that consumes nutrients. And that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's Drop, Hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. Hello, my name is Jim Stein and I operate Aquarium Design and I offer aquarium sales, installation, supplies, livestock, and aquarium maintenance in Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Agora Hills, Calabasas, and Malibu, California. I specialize in custom aquariums ranging from freshwater, saltwater fish, living coral reef, and jellyfish display systems. I've been involved professionally and at many levels within the aquarium industry since 1987 and have been in business for myself since 1999. I've worked for many people and some for over 20 years now. My team can provide you with a unique range of aquarium systems ranging from rectangular in-wall to freestanding cylinders, bow fronts, and custom curved shapes. Additionally, we can offer a variety of aquascapes such as an artificial coral insert, coral skeleton decorations, custom-made branching rock structures, and themed environments such as this Jules Verne version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. With today's technology in energy efficient DC water pumps and LED lighting, operating costs are much lower. We can automate many of the maintenance features such as water replenishment, water changes, lighting schedule including moonlight lighting and even your general daily feedings. I can even install an app on your smartphone that will allow you to monitor, to be notified, to control and view your aquarium anywhere in the world. 
If you're looking for something truly unique, give me a call and let's discuss the possibilities of creating your aquatic dream. I'm knowledgeable, insured, and very reliable. My name is Jim Stein, and you can reach me at 805-241-7140. I look forward to helping you achieve your aquatic dream. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. Okay, so with the uh, tank now on top of the stand, uh, we've got to put in the uh, drain line and return line. This is the return line assembly here. Uh, one portion will go in that small hole. The other portion goes up through there. And then we've got the, uh, the Durzo stand pipe uh, that we're trimming down just a little bit, and that'll go into that there hole. Before the tank is slid all the way towards the front of the stand, the drain and return lines are placed into the bottom of the overflow. And again, your gasket is in there. Tightening the bulkheads first Daniel. allows yeah, an okay. easier and more secure means of ensuring these fittings are properly tightened. And do we need to trim the length of that hose for that return, or is that a good length? It's a good length. Okay. And then that's the uh, return line, uh, the discharge nozzle that he is threading in there, and that's where the water will come back into the tank itself. And then Eric has the uh, standpipe trimmed a little bit. And we'll place that in here in just a second. Okay. And that is the standpipe. Good height, we can still get the lid on there. Okay. Tightening these bulkheads with the tank sitting off the back edge of the stand offers us far more ease and access than it would be if we were trying to access them through the cutouts inside the stand. The trick now is we have to lift the tank up so that the bulkheads can fit over the edge of the stand and into the cutouts. All right, so Eric right now is mounting the uh, C-clamps for the UV sterilizer. That'll get mounted vertically on that 2x4 inside there. That way it always will be able to get rid of its air gap. Um, turns out that the stand doesn't have a whole lot of wide areas on the inside, so as I have to go back to the hardware store to get two adapter fittings, I'm going to pick up a 1x6 and I may even run home to get a can of black spray paint, spray paint so we can put a uh, horizontal board across there to mount uh, the Apex uh, brain as well as energy bar. Uh, so that's there. And then I also need to figure out where I'm going to put the pump for the uh, ATO, which is the Spectre Pure Peristaltic Pump. And it could be mounted right up above uh, the reservoir. Um, or maybe on that uh, board in the back. I haven't made that final decision yet. So um, that's where we are at the moment. Okay, the uh, ATO container is in. The ATO pump is positioned. Uh, we've got the clamps for the UV sterilizer. Unfortunately, the sleeve inside the sterilizer is cracked, so we can't put that in. So we'll do a workaround with the tubing. Um, it's a current brand USA uh, water pump, DC pump. There's the controller back there. Protein skimmer, um, which is a bubble magnus, is in place. And then we've got um, a board we're going to mount across the back side that I can mount the um, Apex uh, brain and energy bar to. And then we'll right now get the uh, drain hoses uh, connected to the drain on the underside of the tank. 
And Condi is just about ready to uh, start coming inside doing the rock work, so let's go see what he's got ready out there. So here is uh, Condi's sculpture so far. Uh, we've got a few extra pieces of um, branching real reef, a few extra pieces of live rock, but that creates the basic structure we can add to it. And of course on top of that is going to end up going the um, decorative corals in the aquarium. And with the 2x6 mounting board painted black to match the inside of the stand, Eric has measured and is now drilling the holes so as to mount the board to the inside of the stand. So I had about a half, no, go higher. <coughs> and the long end of the board goes down. Let's flip it around. Here, take it up, turn it completely around. There you go. Okay, give yourself about a half inch gap. Up, up, up. Half inch and make it level, that's crooked. Um, right hand side down, there you go, right there. Uh, screw her in. With a keen eye and a sure hand, both Eric and I define where the best position for the mounting board is and Eric drills and screws it into place. So this tank, even though it's not going to be a reef tank, will have an algae scrubber on there to try to help minimize algae growth within the tank or certainly algae problems. Uh, it might help a little bit with phosphates, it might help a little bit with nitrates, but where it's most effective is competing against the same nutrients that uh, bad algae feed upon. What we have here is the rain filter from Santa Monica. Uh, this is the waterfall style filter. Some might say it looks like a mailbox, but this is the portion that holds the LED lights and this encloses or covers the screen portion, which is where the algae grows itself. Uh, this bracket here that uh, holds the screen is also the bracket that uh, brings the water from the pump up inside through here, comes up and rains down over the screen the idea being that the water is running down the screen and the lights are on both sides of it, illuminating the screen. So for all intent and purpose, we're growing algae um, inside here, um, a supercharged version. And the idea is that the more that we can grow in here, we'll compete with those same nutrients that the algae in the tank are feeding upon. This here allows us to remove the screen and then scrape off the screen, thus physically removing the algae, which physically removes the nutrients from the system. Keep in mind that regardless as to what kind of a filter system you have, waste never technically leaves the tank unless you physically remove it. If you put activated carbon in, it removes colors and odors, but it locks it up inside and technically it's still inside the aquarium until you remove it. You put GFO in a system, the GFO draws into it the phosphate molecules. Technically, it's still in the aquarium until you physically remove it. In this case, we're going to be removing algae that have consumed uh, nutrients uh, that encourage algae. And when we harvest that algae, that's when we physically remove those nutrients from the system. So again, what we have here is the uh, uh, rain algae scrubber. And this is the uh, portion where the screen and the water is. Uh, this is the platform that I have to set it upon. And essentially what we're going to end up doing is mounting a water pump. In this case it's a Cedra brand water pump on the platform. I'm going to assemble uh, an elbow here that we can discharge water into the T that will go here. Um, and so there is a short fitting, it includes plenty of fittings um, to use. And um, let's see here, so that piece, and then depending upon the water level in your system, will define which pieces you actually use. But this essentially becomes the build on the algae scrubber. Again, the pump is down here, it'll discharge somewhere. I've got to come up with an elbowed hose barb 
uh, to make it into here, fills up this pipe, brings up here, rains down, drips down through here. This is all sitting in the sump. And of course then uh, the housing will actually end up going upon it like so. So again, the light inside there is illuminating that screen. Uh, this you hook up to the power supply and hook up to your uh, timer. Uh, typically it's out of phase from the uh, lights in the aquarium so it helps to balance out a pH level because as you know when lights are on and algae is growing they're producing oxygen via photosynthesis. When the lights are off the algae are consuming carbon dioxide. So if I ran this at the same time as the lights in the tank I'd have two areas in the tank and the algae scrubber both producing or consuming a, a carbon dioxide, producing or consuming oxygen at the same time. So this runs opposite of what the um, uh, lights in the tank are, so it helps kind of create a balance in there. Uh, so that essentially is the uh, rain algae scrubber from Santa Monica, and I've been a real big um, advocate and promoter of the Santa Monica brand algae scrubbers. I think they're all great. Okay, so we're at the point where uh, the water pump is sitting in the sump. That's the controller for it. The ATO reservoir is back there. The ATO peristaltic pump is in position. Um, turns out there was a problem with the UV sterilizer. The sleeve is cracked, so we're just going to come up with some extra tubing there. Um, made a little mistake on the pump. I thought it was inch and a quarter threads. Turns out it's inch and a half. So I need to go run to the hardware store to get the right fittings. Um, we got a 2x6, spray painted it black so it matches everything and that's what the uh, uh, Neptune Apex system as well as all the other the Tunzies and the uh, uh, DC water pump uh, controllers will be mounted to. Condi took and made a manifold for the dual wet dry trickle filter drains and that's hooked up to the underside of the tank. So at this point we are ready to Move forward. Move forward and slide that big boy up against the wall and then Condi can start doing the uh, rock work. <laughs> 